Hello, dear students. Uh, now, in this video lecture, we are going to talk about suppliers' choices on positioning in uh, choosing offering strategies and uh, in choosing what the bid contents would be. And uh, this video lecture includes uh, list like or checklist like. Uh, uh, presentations and uh, things about uh, uh, what supplier might find uh, uh, useful to uh, do. And so this is a kind of a list like or a kind of a toolbox uh, like thing about uh, of remembering certain issues when uh, selling projects in practice. Well, uh, first uh, what factors uh, the supplier should consider uh, when evaluating a request for bid? So, the supplier gets a request for bid uh, from the customer and uh, starts then evaluating it. So, first, what is the nature of the request of the bid? So, in which stage is the project uh, at uh, the customer's side. So have they already decided to make the project or can they still withdraw from doing the project? Is this a binding uh, bit or is this just a quotation which is non-binding uh, yet? Then the competitive situation is rather important to understand what is our relationships, uh, relationship to the customer? And what are the likely competitors' relationships to the customer? Uh, have we been able to influence the customer before the customer sent the request uh, for bid to us? So uh, can we have a competitive advantage in a way so that we have uh, advised the customer to uh, twist the request for bit in the way that uh, we have a great capability of just providing that kind of a solution and uh, do we have a winning, winning capability uh, or winning potential in, in that sense. So the fourth item, attractiveness of the request for bid uh, from a business perspective. What is the scale and uh, profit level uh, of uh, the potential project? Uh, uh, what effects uh, joining the competitive bidding uh, process can have on us? So it can also be a signal when we are joining the competitive bidding that we are interested. It can also be a signal for other customers uh, that we are interested in these kinds of uh, projects. And uh, also uh, the kind of uh, eagerness that we show in joining the process uh, also shows to the market that uh, we are in that business and we want to be in that business and we are hungry for getting such uh, projects. Does the project have uh, reference value? Uh, for example, we don't have only the profit motive and the money is not the only important thing, or let's say the short term uh, uh, profit is not uh, so important that it might be uh, uh, good to go into a project and uh, make a wonderful project for having the references for the next projects and then we can maybe have more profit or cash uh, from the next projects but when we have entered the market by uh, first delivering one project for reference. And uh, uh, can the project be beneficial for using to establish uh, relationships. Uh, then um, uh, lastly, the technical attractiveness of the uh, request for bid. Uh, what is our ability to meet the technical requirements, also time requirements? Does our company need the project to maintain certain level uh, capacity? Uh, 
so we want don't want our uh, people to be unemployed so for example if our uh, order books are uh, rather empty so then maybe we would like to enter to this project and even uh, bid with low price so that we can get uh, the project and we can get some uh, employment for our idle people uh, and uh, do the new technologies and procedures uh, uh, in the project uh, support companies uh, strategic choices so uh, are we uh, likely to be in business or do we want to be in business uh, uh, of delivering projects of this kind and based on this technology okay now uh, to make things somewhat concrete uh, this is a sample outline of the bid uh, the uh, table of contents uh, so to say it's good to start uh, with a summary of customers expectations to understand really that we have uh, or give the customer an understanding that we have understood uh, uh, what uh, the customer wants and uh, what are the customer's expectations. Uh, then uh, item number two, suggestion for solution. And uh, now there are a lot of appendices that we are referring to, which uh, just uh, says here that uh, there might be a lot of information in a bit uh, but we must have a kind of a rather concise uh, main document and then the rest are, uh, the details are in appendices. Uh, succession for uh, project uh, execution, number three. For benefits uh, of the solution for the customer, we must argue for the benefits. Uh, then... Uh, five price and commercial delivery terms uh, terms for example installments and uh, payment uh, terms of payment when uh, do we get money for what kind of a partial uh, advancements uh, is there a kind of a down payment that we want from the customer or does the customer want uh, a guarantee that we put for the customer in, uh, in the uh, unlikely case that uh, we are not going to deliver or there are some problems in our deliveries. Number six, possible extra works uh, not taken uh, up in the request for bid and uh, seven contact persons uh, and uh, then eight appendices. Now uh, what it comes to number six, uh, possible extra works, we also can uh, include option to our bid which means that uh, if we know something uh, better to offer than the customer could even ask us from we, we could uh, uh, offer that as an option so if a customer uh, wants uh, in uh, their request for bid certain scope I think that we should uh, uh, offer that scope because all our competitors are going to offer that specified scope but uh, then we can always add an option and uh, say that dear customer we would have a much better solution for you uh, which is not in accordance to your request for bid but uh, this would be uh, satisfying your needs and uh, would offer something much more uh, if we would deliver this kind of a project to you and then uh, we could offer uh, another project in a way a better project as an option for the customer to choose from. Now uh, matters to consider uh, uh, by the supplier when preparing for negotiations then later on when uh, the supplier is in the negotiations phase if uh, they have entered so far uh, there are some important issues to consider and I think that these are rather uh, generic questions that yeah, the supplier should think anyways and, and even much earlier than when the negotiations start. So first 
alternatives for customer and competitive situation. So it's important to understand if uh, the customer has other alternatives, even, for example, uh, not doing the project at all. That's important to understand whether he has that kind of alternative or what are the possible uh, competitors and uh, and and uh, how good choices potentially the customer has uh, of choosing uh, another supplier uh, uh, instead of us. Uh, number two, negotiation parties and their objectives. Who are the actual uh, parties or contact persons from the customer's side and what are their uh, interests and what they expect as a result from the negotiation. People might have different uh, priorities even in the customer's organization. Number three, issues to be negotiated, uh, negotiated options and their valuation. Uh, so uh, it's uh, important to understand what the customer is likely to focus in the negotiations and, and what the customer might want to achieve. And what do we want to achieve? What are the issues that we want to negotiate uh, about? And then uh, to understand also the op options that we can uh, 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 offer. So if the customer, for example, wants uh, an extension of the scope of our project deli delivery. So uh, is there an option then to change, uh, for example, the delivery time and uh, so on. So to kind of a bargain uh, about uh, things and uh, what are the limits and possibilities to uh, take under discussion. This should be already thought beforehand and before the negotiations start. Then uh, lastly, uh, the cause and objectives of negotiations. Uh, what are the financial and other consequences of the negotiations uh, uh, if uh, uh, the negotiations don't lead uh, to a contract? That's important also to analyze and also to understand that options, option that we are not going to force uh, the project uh, to a contract if the contract is uh, very unfavorable uh, for the supplier in the end. So we shouldn't maybe uh, sign uh, such a contract, although there is a kind of a uh, long selling process and uh, a very big will to end up of being awarded with a contract, but uh, still I I think it's important to understand also that issue. Uh, what objective the customer has set for the negotiations? Uh, what the customer is likely to see as a fair negotiation result? Uh, what uh, objectives do we want to set for single or individual uh, negotiated matters? And uh, are there some matters that should be negotiated, uh, negotiated in connection to a larger uh, entity? And uh, are we ready to make concessions? And uh, who has the right to make concessions? Even though we don't talk about money, so if the customer requests something that would you include this and that in your delivery, so saying yes to the customer might uh, have the financial implication of uh, uh, very uh, large sum of money. So uh, it's very important to uh, think beforehand uh, where we can go to and what kind of concessions we can make and uh, who uh, is uh, uh, authorized to make decisions about those concessions. And of course, we don't uh, need to make the decisions in that uh, negotiation. Over that negotiation table, we can uh, exit the room and discuss with our negotiation team and we can come back the next day or next week and so on. So uh, it is not necessary to kind of a, um, 
make decisions uh, right away uh, when they are really difficult decisions and there are very big financial implications uh, connected to these decisions. Well, uh, this is all I wanted to uh, say. Uh, thank you for participating to this uh, video lecture and uh, see you again in the other video lectures. Bye.